A lot of us want to be financially successful. We go as far as making mood boards and putting our favorite inspiring people on it. We even listen to motivational speeches. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. Already making decisions about your life and your ass with sleep. Okay, okay, Steve. I love a girl's sleep, okay? These are some of my attempts at creating a successful business. And these are the stories on how and why they failed. I hope you learned something from this one. I actually got inspired to do this video when I saw Annie Long's video where she talked about this topic why her business failed in the first year. And I also I saw Tayo Aina do this video recently, so I'm just like, you know what? The universe is speaking in that say you're going to come and tell your story. You don't know who's going to learn from it. I'm pretty sure that we have people who are trying to start businesses here, and or maybe you are running a business currently, or you're planning to run a business, or you as well have a business that has failed. <laughs> you can relate, right? So um, I'm not going to make it too serious. It's going to be like a story time. Like, let's just chat about it, let's just about it, and let's see what we can learn. The very first time we traveled out of the country, in fact, was while I was in university. And we went to we went to Dubai. Like my dad would give us a, would give us pocket money of like a thousand dollars and say, okay, for your two weeks stay, use this to take care of yourself, buy your clothes, if you want to buy like food and stuff, use this for yourself. What I used to do was when my dad gives me this money, instead of me to buy like one shop, buy clothes and everything, <laughs> I would keep this money. And then I used to also ask him, like, okay, if you give me a thousand dollars, I'll say, okay, that please add another thousand dollars. So if I have like two thousand dollars, I'll tell him that, okay, I'll return back his one thousand dollars, but I'll use the money to like buy jewelry and small, small things that I know that my university mates, my roommates, my floor mates, like people in my hostel would enjoy, or my classmates, and then I'll buy it and sell to them. I'll just maybe I'll just mark it up very, very small so that I know that it will move fast. Like I don't want to buy stock and keep it. And I used to have a lot of people buying me. But that's not the first official business I actually want to tell you guys about. So my dad has this policy that as soon as you, as soon as everybody now in my family, my nuclear family graduates from university and finishes NYSC, he gives us one million naira. With this one million naira, I use it to open a boutique in Abuja. Even before I moved to an actual store, like with mannequins and shop assistants and everything, I started selling on my Blackberry. What I used to do was I, used, I had suppliers who would supply me outfits and then I would put it as a markup, put it in the boutique. I had two staff working with me and then we would sell it. So this is how I was running the business. And if I do say so myself, the business was actually quite successful. It was very stressful because um, I wasn't physically there. It was a business that needed my physical presence, which is one mis one huge mistake any entrepreneur can have. I and mean, obviously, when you first start your business, depending on your capacity, you might not be able to employ staff immediately, but you have to, absolutely have to, put it in mind that you need a succession plan for the business. Because anytime we travel for like vacation and stuff, there will always be an issue or the other. Customers always complain and tell me that their delivery was mixed up or somebody somebody will enter the store to buy something that I've told the person maybe it's like $100 and my shop assistant to sell it for like $50. I have to call the person and say, no, 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 you don't do that. Or somebody will walk in and say, oh, I'm Dancy's friend, give me for free. So it wasn't sustainable because I didn't have any succession plan. When we came back from vacation, I decided to go to Dubai and live there and also to work and to school. There was nobody I could hand over the business to and say, okay, be running it for me while I'm in Dubai, which would have been an ideal thing because I could have been supplying items to the store from Dubai since I was there physically. But unfortunately, I didn't have anybody there. Yeah, so don't create a business that cannot last in your absence. You know, it's, so it's, a, it's a worst thing you can see yourself as an entrepreneur, like absolute worst. Just make sure that you have the right people in the right place. They have to be the right fit for your business. That's that on that. Like, I can't stress that enough. That one is all caps. Put the peg in the wall. That's that on that. Now, oh my god, my second business, which is, I, I believe that this is my love, was really cashing out. So, how this hair business started was um, my parents traveled to Dubai one time without us, and my parents at that time, they used to really love Dubai. Like, if you tell my mom now, let's go on a vacation, I'm 
so sure that she's going to tell you that she wants to go to Dubai, even if she has gone to Dubai one million times. Anyway, so um, this second business, one time my parents went to Dubai and then they met an Indian person and he got my uh, contact details and then he sent me an email that he could supply me human hair. I decided to explore the, the option because I've always been this like entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit kind of girl. Like I've always been driven by having my own thing, running my own business and everything. So he sent me the initial samples and um, I sold those samples and people really liked it. I got really good, amazing feedback from them, like the customer, the saloon guy, and even me personally using the hair. I knew that it was good quality. So I think I only had about thousand dollars at that point. No, no, I only had five hundred dollars at that point. And he told me that the minimum order quantity was a thousand dollars. So I reached out to my sister who was living in, in Dubai at the time, and I was like, "Hey, do you have?" $500 to add to my $500 and then I can use to start business and we can be co-owners of the business or I can return your money later with interest. So my sister sent me, I think she sent me like a thousand dollars or something and she was like, okay, use it to like just start running the business and everything. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> you guys, when I tell you that I love this business so much, eh? I love this business so much because I was cashing out. See, if you guys don't know Miss One Account on Instagram, go and follow that girl and study that girl's business pattern. That is exactly the same business pattern I want to use. That was my model. Like, if a hair, maybe I buy a hair like for 40,000 naira, or let me use dollars since I've been talking in dollars. So if I buy a hair for like maybe $100, I will sell it maybe at $130. I don't want to make my profits too much so that I won't chase away people. Meanwhile, if the market was saturated with people that will buy $100 and sell for $300, so that's where I stood out. And that's the same thing Miss Waneka does, like small markup for sell quantity. Trust me, the person that is selling 1,000 pieces with only 5,000 naira profit is still richer than the person that is selling two pieces or even 100 pieces with 10,000 naira profit. You do the math, go figure. You won't believe that within maybe a month, I had already made like $3,000 on this first order because obviously like longer hairs have more profit than shorter hairs. And at the time, people were really requesting long hairs, like long hairs, like Waist length were in the relax skirt. I was really selling a lot of long, long length hairs. People were buying this hair, like I was cashing out big time. Within a month, I had already, um, I'd already um, gotten back my return on investment and made a profit of two thousand dollars. So I paid my sister and I paid her with interest. She was so marked, she was like, eh, like this thing was just giving her like few tricks. She was like, she couldn't believe it. Then she now said that okay, she wants to invest more in the business like should she give me more money and i said okay fine like, we can run the business together like we can be partners but you cannot believe that the next money we invest into the business we still we're, we're just cashing out like we're cashing out that was the money i used to buy myself my first iphone like that was legit one of the proudest moments in my whole entire life like buying myself the first iphone i remember it was only around fifty thousand naira then I was like so, I felt so proud of myself, like oh my god, see what I'm able to do for myself. It's not like my parents couldn't do it, but just that liberation and just that, you know, empowerment of feeling that I didn't even need to ask them. Oh, you guys, I can't, I can't, I can't describe this enough. So, um, why this particular business failed was because as we kept ordering and ordering, eventually the, the straw that broke the camel's back was one day, I told him to send me bulk orders, so I, I ordered from my supplier and then this guy changed the quality like the quality he was high he had been steadily supplying me he suddenly changed it and sent me inferior quality i was so upset you guys i was so upset like i think i almost cried i sent it to my um hair guy and he was like oh this quality is not good send it back so i called my supplier i was so upset i was like how can you send me this quality what's wrong with you like i'm not i'm one of your biggest clients in nigeria how can you people think of sending me this kind of quality what's wrong with you like this is the end of the business i'm not doing again so i cancelled him and i was like okay let me search for another supplier guys i till this day i have not found a supplier that supplies me his quality like i still have a friend that bought that hair from me this was like maybe seven years ago Four years after, she told me that, please, do you still have that hair? That she still has the one she bought from me and she's still using it. That everywhere she wears that hair to, people ask her where she got it from. I tried reaching out to the guy eventually, like, you guys, it just didn't work. I didn't find another supplier and I did, I did really did not want to, like, tarnish my brand image by selling inferior quality and replace. People are already used to me having the best quality hair in the market and then I'll not replace it with inferior. I didn't just want to go into all of that. So, 
and uh, what I would tell you that you can learn out of that is that you should definitely have a backup plan when it comes to the vendors that you're working with. So if you are in a supply chain kind of business, if you are into buying and selling, you cannot rely on one person. You cannot rely on one company to be your supplier. Like, if, no matter how established the company is, have at least three, four, five that you can always use as your backup. Because see, this is what ruined a seriously this was a gold mine that is why whenever miss Monica puts on her page and she's like oh you guys are sleeping on hair business it's a gold mine is you you get you make more money from it than oil and gas i believe her seriously i believe that girl do you know how much that girl makes on one sale she can on one sale she can make like 300 million naira on one sale and her profit is not her profit margin is not that high so anyway that was the third one uh, that was the third one Actually, I'm cringing if I tell you guys about this one because it's a bit awkward. I feel very stupid for venturing into this business because I feel like I should know better. Like working for a multinational and having tried different businesses over time, I'm still having, I'm still running my own business right now. I feel like I should know better. So basically, <sighs> when I got into makeup, I was very, I'm, I'm very interested in the makeup industry. Like I would like to eventually have my own foundation line, my own skincare line, or something. But I realized that like, everybody was having their own eyelashes, like Ujaki eyelashes, Mary eyelashes, Dolapo eyelashes, Zainab eyelashes. Like everybody was having their eyelashes. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to go to the house and now say, oh, I'm gonna start buying lashes, lashes because lashes are lashes. Like they're everywhere in the market. Like every Tom Dick and Harry is selling lashes. Even if you call it Minko, you call it, if they want very cheap lashes, they will get. Like you can literally go sit down on your phone and order by yourself from Alibaba. So I was just like, I don't think I want to go that line and like, stamp my name on lashes and everything. I stumbled upon Bob Risky's page. People are already very familiar with Bob Risky, the name, the brand. So it's going to be an easy sell for me. Let me just become a, a retailer. So I asked my boyfriend for the money. My boyfriend gave me, and I promised him, I was like, okay, just give me this money. I'll sell social amount and I'll give you back the interest. He was like, no, don't worry about the interest. Just use it and invest in yourself. I was like, ah, boyfriend of the year, Casey. Comment below. <laughs> so he gave me money and I invested in the lashes. I bought 25 pieces to, to retail. And again, the profit margin on the lashes are not, is not much at all. Like it's not plenty. I'm not making I'm not making up to 500 naira on one piece. So what had happened was that um, I got these lashes and they supplied it to me, and they promised me that they were going to post 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 my name on their page as one of their suppliers. So I was like, okay, fine. At least that will help me with publicity. Like that would really go a long way because me on my own, I'm not sure I can market it fully to reach as many people as I want. Do you know that? That stock of lashes, I still have like half of it sitting in my room because I tried selling it and maybe because I'm dramatic, I bought the really dramatic, the really long, you guys have seen me use those style of lashes. I bought a picture, but I bought majority of the really dramatic, really long eyelashes and why this is a big mistake is that I didn't survey the market. I have a lot of makeup artist friends and not a lot, but I have, I have close makeup artist friends. I should have asked them what do your customers like what would you like what would you buy if you were going to buy these eyelashes off of me like i think i sold only like maybe 12 out of the whole pack out of that 12 four four i four of my colleagues i said take this one is your own transfer to where you have the money this one is your own pay the way you have the money that's how i sold so maybe i sold like six to eight pieces on my own even with the publicity put it on my whatsapp status on my instagram i even did videos for it like did beauty videos so my makeup artist first to tag me lie like nobody was buying so what you should learn from this particular one is don't buy based on your own personal taste or based on the taste of your friends and family buy or buy based on your market research like buy because like for instance i like hair that's really long but if i'm going to say let me start selling hair which is coming soon i'm going to be selling braided wigs if i'm going to say, let me start selling braided wigs i'm not going to go and um make 1000 long braided wigs because i personally like it doesn't mean that my mar my market is going to receive it the same way do you guys get what i'm trying to say so that's it like don't don't use your personal taste to buy and then another really important lesson which i think is way more important than the personal taste is don't buy just because of the club so just because it's trending at the moment or just because um it's a popular celebrity that is making it or it's a popular brand i want to be affiliated with them don't don't start a business on those reasons. Start a business with a vision, a mission, and a purpose. So, which leads me into my well, the fourth one actually that I was going to say was when I tried to start a travel company. But my work is so busy that a travel company, a travel website, is a site that you need to be hands on, like 24/7. You need to be answering people, customer care, emails, and everything. So, I know that it's not the time for me to start that. So, I just post that one. But which brings me to my um, last point. So, here I know that I'm into production. Like I produce 
videos from people. You know, like I will come with my whole setup, my lights, my cameras, my tripod, everything you need to do. I will do the editing, the directing, every single thing you need. I'm just starting out, but we are getting to movie level, you guys. We are getting to movie level. So I obviously from all these things I've learned over time, I'm watching other people, I'm studying people's business, and most importantly, knowing that. This is my passion. This is something I'm gifted in. This is something that I had a mission and a vision for. I know that it's definitely going to be successful. So you guys, you guys, make sure you holler at your girl and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. So that's it for this video, guys. I really hope that I haven't rambled. I, I, I think I really, I really want everybody to learn from my mistakes. Like, don't make the same mistakes I made if you can avoid it. Why wouldn't you avoid it? Um, but that's it for this video guys. I think you guys have learned a thing or two from this video. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Let me tell you something. Something you will appreciate. Oh. Something you will appreciate, oh Hey! Don't feel like you ever wanna see me